the Supreme Christ, I'm in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. Last week we, we began this, this chapter and began this book. And in all probability, this book is going to run the duration of this whole year. Someone once said, people won't listen to what you say if they don't know how much you care first. And that is true. And in a similar way, Hebrews is showing us how much God really genuinely cares for you and I. You, you'd better get this right and know today that God cares for you. That doesn't mean that life is always easy. It doesn't mean that you're not going to face times of trial and difficulty, times of brokenness, times of pain. You know, we all have been through similar things. I have been through what Don's going through, and, and I know how his heart hurts, but I also know the power of a God who cares. And someone asked me, they said, how did you make it through the passing of your wife? I said, by trusting the Lord. But, you know, we all have issues and places in our lives that we face, and we too must trust the Lord. One glimpse, one glimpse on the cross, I believe, shouts that God cares for us. I believe it's a declaration. I believe God is really making it explicitly clear and concise and reminded of what the Word says. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You know, I want you to listen to something. When what the Old Testament gave in precept of Christ, the New Testament today gives us in perfection. What the Old Testament presents, what we could see as a shadow, the New Testament presents in substance. And it's real. It's there for us. What the Old Testament presented of Christ in ritual, the New Testament presents of Christ in reality, for He is a real Savior. He is a real God, and He will make real changes in your life. Hallelujah. What the Old Testament presented of Christ in picture, the New Testament presents of Christ in person. It reveals who He is. And listen, He must be real in your life. You're not going to get through the trials, the issues, the struggles, the pains, the hurts, the problems of life if you have not realized the realness of Christ in your life. The foretold is fulfilled. And then prophecy becomes history. And not only that, but pre-incarnation becomes incarnation. And Christ is the incarnate Christ. He came. He is fully God. And thank God, fully man. And amazing what He did and what He accomplished. And it's still amazing what He's doing today in our lives and the lives of others when we'll just simply reach out by faith and trust Him. So we get to Hebrews and it shows us how much God cares. A lot of times we read and we read about the issues as we see. We see about the Hall of Fame of Faith. Some of the other things, Hebrews 12 and what he tells us there, and the issues that we deal with, and he being, of course, the high priest, supreme in all ways, and today he being sovereign. But there's even more to the picture than that. So we see, in essence, how much God cares in order to draw us uh, today to hear what God wants us to know. So I really believe, and I've really tried to preach through some books in the Bible over the last several years. We, we just finished up in the book of Joshua. We spent over a year in the book of Romans. We have brought to the church things that will strengthen your life and mine as the body of Christ. But we must take these things and receive them and apply them into our living that God then can develop us to be greatly used for Him. So I believe that God today, God's way of speaking in these last days in which we're living is something far better than before. First, we are living in last days, and you can't tell me otherwise. 
And I base that not on what I think. I base that on what I know of what God's word has declared. And the, the one through whom God spoke is far superior to anything regardless whatever it may be. Now, we may have great orators and we may have great politicians and we may have great theologians. But let me tell you what, there's none equal to what our God has said. And the neat thing about this, it's not something that has to be thought up. It's already been declared. And not only has it been declared, but what God's Word has then also done, it's been proven. And we prove it daily in our lives. You know, when you read like, God is my refuge and my strength, and, and you read scriptures like, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You read these scriptures today, you know how they become, they're just not words, are they? They become proven in your life. They, they become a part of what you're going through. I mean, when he says, I'm your healer, how do you know that? Because you've experienced that healing power that he possesses. So you come to the place and the reality of then the Bible becomes real in your living. As we're going to see one of the ways God spoke, he even spoke through his angels. And so that being the word, the word angel means simply messenger. Now, you've, I want to get some things right here. Because there's a lot of confusion today in the element of the church about things like angels and some of the things that I'm going to be sharing with you. And I want you to get it scripturally right. So Jesus wasn't sent to be the messenger. Listen, he was sent to be the message. He was sent to be the Messiah. He was sent to be the mediator between man and God. He was sent to be the majesty of God and declaring the goodness of God. So Jesus is the Word, and the Word is superior. Look, go to John, and you see. And there we find that He is the Word, the Logos. So if He's the Word, He's then God revealed to us. So if He's God revealed to us, what do you do? When something is revealed to you, then you receive that and you utilize that in your life. I want you to join with me in Hebrews chapter 1. I'm going to try to go quickly as I can. Now take up all your time. I know some of you are probably hungry. And um, I've never seen a bunch of Baptists get together if they weren't hungry. Amen. Remember those barbecues out back, Don? Man, that guy could make the best barbecue chicken you ever put your mouth on. Maybe we need to be thinking about that. Spring is coming. That's right. Hebrews chapter 1. Last week, we dealt with verses 1 through 3. Today, I want to pick up with 4 and go down through 14. And, uh, and I pray it will be a blessing to you. Bertie, so good to see you and Laura. I'm glad y'all... I'm glad y'all came around the mountain. Amen. And uh, got here today, so that's great. Starting with verse 4, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day I begotten thee, and again uh, I will be to him, a father, and he shall be to me a son. And, and again, when he bringeth in the, the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers as a flame of fire? But unto the son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. I read that last night, yesterday, yesterday morning, and I just had to say, praise God. His throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of his, thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, 
hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and shall all wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of all the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be to heirs of salvation? May God have the blessing to the reading of his word. Now, looking at this for a few minutes here, what does it actually mean today to be a genuine Christian in a hostile society? And that's exactly what we live in. in. I have never in my life seen our society be as it is. You know, it was on the streets. Now it's coming to the classrooms. And not only has it come into the classrooms, but it's coming even into the boardrooms of the, of the school boards. It's coming into every element of life. And everywhere you look, there's hostility. I mean, it's a, it's a wearisome day. And to joyfully embrace everything, the Bible says, and then humbly, to, to humbly and, and faithfully seek to live, to live that out in a way that would honor God. And that's the way we ought to live. In a hostile society, we should be living our genuine Christianity. And I believe today, and I think, beyond a shadow of a doubt, <coughs> pardon me, in 2022, we as Christians are going to find that that's you and I. We have got to live out today exactly with humility, with an humble heart, and faithfully today the Word of God in our living. Finding out firsthand with uh, the outside pressures, and then there are inside struggles, not to compromise. And I'm telling you today, for 30 years, I've been pounding this pulpit and preaching this Word. I have preached in other churches. I preached in other states. I've been to different locations. But I'm going to tell you something. The greatest tragedy that I see happening in the church today is this issue of compromising the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The struggle is always the compromise. We're looking for easier ways. Sure, we're living in a time of difficulty. Sure, we're living in a time where we don't know the answers. COVID and what's happening and trying to find solutions and hearing what's coming out of CDC, we don't know what to believe anymore. And I'm not saying that sarcastically. We really don't. They're dealing with something that they don't know what they're dealing with. They're facing something that they have never faced before. But you look back to the history of mankind, this is not the first time mankind has faced such an obstacle. But also, I think, I see, and these are the parts. I mean, we're living in a sinful world. We're living in an age today that has basically turned its face upon God, away from God, rather. And today, what I see, let's sit that over here a moment, and let's see where we are as a church. What I see that's happening today within the file of the church is a compromise. Now, let's talk about that a moment. To compromise on the faith on what we actually believe. Well, listen, if you've compromised on it, then you've really actually not believed it, have you? I mean, today, if you've turned your back on the Word, God, and what it says, you never really believe that to begin with. And I believe the Lord has driven us here in Hebrews in 2022 to hold up two things. Two things. If you want two things that we're going to hold up as a church this year, 
is, the, is these two things. One, biblical convictions. I just didn't say convictions. A lot of people have convictions, but they have wrong convictions. We need biblical convictions. <coughs> and when we center our convictions on the Bible, you never will be in a position of error. I look so forward to the day when I don't have to stand up here and sip on water to talk to you. Biblical conviction. Secondly, today is Christian compassions. You know, not only... I'm seeing more compassion. It's kind of bad. You can't turn your TV on <coughs> if it's not a shot of a dog or a cat or some poor animal that's been abused. Now listen, I'm an animal lover and I don't think anyone should abuse animals either. And I certainly don't think you should abuse people. And I certainly don't think you should abuse children. But it's a sad day when we're more concerned about animal species than we are about humanity. Amen. <coughs> we've lost compassion and we've lost convictions. And when the church, when the believer has gotten to that position, then I'm going to tell you what you've lost. You've lost your focus on God. Very simply. And as we look in the religious rearview mirror, we see churches that at one time had a robust orthodox Christianity, by that a, a solid belief system, but today they have crashed and the church is on the heap of compromise. And that's exactly where we are. I could stand here and name bodies of churches today, and even in the Baptist ranks, and I can name them in other ranks, but I'm not going to do that. The fact of the matter is, it's, it's a tragedy that we have come to that, that today we have fallen into this issue of acceptance of of morals that are, are degradation to the name of God, that we've fallen into a time that we have no respect for God, His Word, or anything else, or His house. I mean, it's a deplorable time in which we're living. So what happens in Hebrews, it becomes a sobering antidote that wakes us up to something that is very important, and that is the excellencies of Christ. And we need to see that today. <coughs> Jesus is just not a Jesus. He's not a plastic Jesus. He's not a bobblehead Jesus that you got on your dashboard. Jesus lives in your heart, in your life, through everything that you're going through. Right now, listen, some of you are going through some tough times, and He's right there in those times with you. And he'll see you through. And I have to remind myself of that. When I sometimes am sitting up at night and Drew and Tiff have gone home and I'm sitting there and I can't sleep. And I'll go in the room and sit in the chair and nothing interesting on television to watch. You know, and the dog, he's laying, oh, he's gone to sleep. And I don't feel like sitting there talking to myself. Things, all this stuff runs through your mind. Does that ever happen to you? You start thinking about things. Think about things, what's really important. I tell you what, I have known this, and I just got to be honest with you. Your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is the most important relationship that you can have in this world. And if you don't have it, you're going to lack. I could have never gotten through what I've been through without Him. 
And he's going to get me through this too. Amen. I appreciate my surgeon. I have the highest regard and respect for him and confidence. But he does he doesn't know it, but there's another surgeon that didn't have to scrub to get in that room because he's pure and clean. And he's going to be right there guiding his hands to bring you through the surgery. I've even had the devil, as Tiff Drew doesn't. Know this. I've had the devil just absolutely assault me with God's through with you. And you're not going to make it. Instead of planning the future, you better be planning your funeral. Nope. He's a liar. I found my relationship with the Lord is so crucial. And I found my family is so important. And I'm going to tell you, When it's all gone and said and done and you have the Lord on your side and you have your family with you, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. And you need to love your family. And you need, listen, I thank God for what He is, what He's done in mine. I was sitting there this morning, listening to Tiff up here doing the quack, quack, quack. So. And I thought, Lord have mercy. She'd cut her hair all short, change her name. She, I'm, I believe a girl could preach if she wanted to. Amen. I have no doubt. I don't want to cut her hair off. I'm just, I'm just kidding about that. But I tell you what. She sure can get a message across, can't she? And you say, well, yeah, that's your daughter. Well, don't you expect me to say that about my daughter? Let me hurry up here. I'm telling you, folks, you need your Lord and you need your family. Amen. That's crucial. And what happens here today in this excellency of Christ, it's as if the author is seeking to convince and bring the church to a reality to hold tight and to stand fast under the lordship of jesus and we're called to give a full-throated devotion and allegiance and commitment to christ and that's where we should be living our lives every day and if you're not doing that you listen you're missing the greatest blessings that god has for you so a theme and i'll give you a couple points and and you can go. Now, I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to really condense it. My theme nails it down in this fact. The fact that the supremacy of Christ must captivate our hearts. The supremacy of Christ must captivate our hearts. He's not a part-time, sometime, half-time Jesus. He's got to be Lord of your life. Amen. <coughs> First... See Him as the rescuing Savior. You know, angels are part of the created order of God, and they are messengers, such as declaring the birth of Christ as they did to the, to the, uh, to the shepherds out upon the field. They were ministering uh, in Christ and His suffering, and they were at the resurrection of Christ. And right now they worship Him and proclaiming how holy how righteous and how majestic He is. They worship Christ. But see, they, they are missing a part of the worship that you and I should have. Angels don't have to be saved because they are in that position today. It's not necessary. They're created beings. We must be saved because we come from 
wretchedness to righteousness through what Christ has done. So therefore, we have then reason to worship him. They're sent, and who does the sending? Christ. And the writer says, Christ has a more excellent name than they do. As great as they are, as great as Gabriel, Archangel, Michael, Archangel. Listen, none is greater than the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Their name is Messenger. His name is Son. S-O-N. And the name is important because the name reveals the essence. Well, what kind of essence? The essence is God. It's the very essence. And His name is the essence of God. And Jesus comes as a rescuing Savior. And today He is our only hope, our only strength. And we must give submission to that Christ today. For in that name... That name is above every name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Secondly, see Him as the reigning Savior. I have to watch drinking so much, then I get too much fluid. (laughs) Trying to balance it out, man. I'm telling you right now. It's crazy. See Him as the reigning Savior. We need to see Him as King. And when you see him as king, then you will see him today as deserving of full worship. And we are to worship him and to declare that worship. The preacher equates Jesus with God. Remember that of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And let all the angels of God worship him as we read. So worship is to say, you know what it means? When, you, when you're worshiping Him, when you came in here for that express purpose today, to worship Him, you know what you're declaring? You're declaring He's worthy. And when you're not worshiping Him, you're saying He's not worthy. So what have you got before God that's getting your worship? Today, you better put Him first and foremost. You know, it's, it's worth enduring the hardships to worship Him. It's, it's worth standing under the pressures of life to worship Him. It's worth today even suffering, suffering for Christ, that He gets glory through that. And what is Jesus worth to you? And I give you that question. What is He worth to you today? Is He worth your worship? Today, we need, and in these days, we especially, considering He suffered for you, died for you, and also bore our shame and our wrath, realizing that, then today, don't you believe that He is worthy of your worship today before His throne? The danger is to compromise. The danger is to compromise and to compromise the absolute superiority of Christ in your life. And that's what you're doing. When you're compromising, you are making him a lesser Jesus in your living. A compromise is not a deconstruction, nor today a a denial of Christianity. You know, we sometimes have our definitions a little bit misaligned. A compromise, listen to me, a compromise is a lesser affirmation of Jesus in your life. You're making him lesser in your life when you today compromise. And today, we are all smart enough to know, as God's word declares, what's right, what's wrong. And it's a stepping away from the greatness of God. And what you're doing, then you're robbing yourself of the blessings of God in your living. So to prevent compromise, we're called to see Him as our rescuing Savior and as our reigning Savior. Third, it's getting shorter, see Him as the sovereign Savior. This is the bigness of Jesus. He's a big Jesus, isn't He? Hallelujah. That He could hang on that cross... And bear all the sins of all the world? 
amazing. And in verse 8, he declares, Thy throne of God is forever and ever. Nothing can change that. Hallelujah. I don't care what the devil said. I don't care what any politician said. I don't care what any messed up church body said. You can't change the fact that his throne is forever and ever. And once you see the supremacy of Jesus in all things, it will bring you then to the place that all the clamor of the world isn't important. You could give a rip what Nancy Pelosi or any other politician has to say. You could care less what they're saying in government. You know what God has said, that he is supreme, he is superior, he today is sovereign, and he's in control. And let me tell you, our God reigns. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. We just need to see Christ on the throne. And whatever is blocking your view, whatever today is causing the haze, of pulling your attention away, get it out of the way. For then the things we face much, will be much more bearable when you look to Jesus. And when we see the sovereign Savior, you know what it does? It calms the waters. It sets our priorities right. And it strengthens your convictions in your servitude to the Lord. People compromise because they really don't see Jesus. Oh, they see Jesus. But they don't see Jesus as Lord of their life. And I lay that on your heart today. Is he Lord of your life? Listen, the supremacy of Christ must captivate your or capture your heart. Fourthly, and one more short one after that, see him as the redeeming Savior. Now, to display and present Christ as Redeemer, the preacher, we don't know who the writer was of Hebrews. It's not important. The preacher goes to a prophet by the name of Isaiah. So loving righteousness, hating lawlessness, and anointed with the gladness, the oil of gladness. So here is Jesus, not just a righteous example. He is presented as a righteous substitute. He took your place. And so what is said in Hebrews uh, 1, 7 through 8, that he sets us down, and he sets us down in front of the cross. And you know what? When he sets you down in front of the cross, you know what you see? You see his redemption. And we need today to get back to the cross. We need to get back today to, to cross living and cross bearing and here is Jesus. He is purchasing people. He paid my debt in full. And yours too. And we should see Him as the one who died on the cross. Providing such spectacular salvation that we would never compromise. And I use that word spectacular. Because if something is spectacular, man, it means it is beyond great. And we need to see that salvation that he has provided as spectacular, supreme, amazing, majestic. What he brought you out, where you were headed to, what he changed, who he's made you to be. And that the fact is, he's still working on you. Amen. Jesus did the absolute, the absolute joy of seeing. Listen, it brought him joy to see you and I redeemed. Amen. There's joy in heaven over a sinner that will repent. Seeing us restored and forgiven. And we should see it that way. Hallelujah. And then lastly, see him as the victorious Savior. This includes verses 10 through 14. I'll be glad when I'm back to full. I may have to go back and start all over again. Because, man, I'm straining to try to get this to you. But I want to give it so much. Mm, and my umpa is right now. Ain't nothing much more than that. But anyway, we'll, I hope you get a little bit of it. Verses 10 through 14. What is that? We see in him today 
the unchanging creator. The preacher quotes in Psalm 102, and he sees Christ as a creator. Jesus is, is presented as the unchanging God and who is to be revered, who is to be worshipped, and he is the last one, and who is to be obeyed. See, you can't reverence him and worship him if you're not obeying him. And you have to answer that question. Are you obeying the Lord? The victorious, the victorious victor, the preacher, he quotes Psalm 110 and declares Christ as king. You know, it's amazing. If you'll read Hebrews, you'll find it pulls back to the Old Testament and pulls forward some of the word that will bless you to give you a clear, definitive picture of who Christ is. Isn't that how we ought to see Him? Really, salvation is completing Him. Amen. If you're thinking you can have it and lose it, you're, not, you're thinking the wrong way. You are complete in Him. Hallelujah. You are signed, sealed, and about to be delivered. Hallelujah. You are in the, you're in the mailbox with a flag up, just waiting for the postman to come by. Hallelujah. It's just a matter of time. Also, prayers are heated. And thank God, enemies are defeated. Amen. I'm glad I serve a risen Savior. And I'm glad today I know He lives, and I know He's won my victory. And today He sits on the throne, and He sits with a promised day found in Revelation 21, that He shall wipe. Listen here, folks. You're sitting here and you got some tears. You're sitting here and today your heart's broken. Whether it's loss, as Don, and what he is encountering, or whether it's with your mom, or whether it's with the other members of your family and situations and things that are happening and sickness and people with so much COVID, sad days. But I want you to know today, in all of that today, what, what is declared by the Revelator in 21, of Revelation, that God will wipe away every tear. And there shall be no more tears. There shall be no more death. There shall be no more pain. For Christ is King. That's the declaration. And you can live with that. You can trust that today. And you can trust the Lord with your life today. And you can live through whatever you're facing and declare that I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know my God is alive. I know He's full of majesty and wonder and awe. And I just want to praise Him and worship Him and adore Him and live for Him and crown Him and make Him Lord of my life in all things. To God be the glory. Church, it's time we the people of God they do that very thing. No more room for compromise. Only room for compassion and love and serving Jesus.